Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we are going to take a look at the Dell G5 15SE, an all-around AMD equipped budget gaming laptop. 6-core Ryzen 5 4600H featuring the Vega 6 integrated graphics and dedicated 6GB AMD RX 5600M. Can it be the king of the budget gaming laptops? On the outside it lacks typical gaming laptop features. There is no RGB or any striking colours, which does work for me personally. Dell refers to this colour as Supernova Silver, and upon a closer look it gives this subtle rainbow glitter effect. The inside of the laptop is black, the touchpad feels really nice to touch. There are small details to remind you of the fact that this is a AMD equipped gaming laptop. In terms of connectivity, the left hand side has power connector, mini display port, a HDMI 2.0, USB 3.0, Ethernet port and a Type-C. The right hand side has Kensington lock slot, a pair of USB 2.0 ports, headphone slash mic combo jack and a full size SD card reader slot. My unit came with the white LED backlit keyboard, however Dell also offered an upgrade to a 4-zone RGB backlit keyboard. Overall, I like the design and the looks of G5, only wishing that the screen bezel was a bit thinner. Let's take a look at the inside. There are no premium materials such as anodized aluminium and pretty much all of the parts are made out of plastic but that's acceptable considering the price point of the G5. There's 10 screws holding the bottom cover, of which two are in the middle top and stay in the cover. Try not to lose the rest of them, believe me, it's easy. Next, grab a plastic card, wedge or a guitar pick and work carefully around the laptop. Eventually, all of the plastic latches let go and the bottom cover comes off. There is decent amount of filtered intake holes to help with the airflow and also some heat reflective tape. The bottom cover feels sturdy. Dual fans and loads of heat pipes, now that looks promising. What's also great is the easy upgradability of the G5. My unit came with just two 4GB sticks of DDR4 memory clocked at 3200MHz and two 56GB NVMe SSD. And as we all know, that fits approximately one game these days. I've decided to fit G5 with this 2TB drive instead. Let's put the back cover on and get on with some testing. The screen hinge is just okay. I didn't notice any screen wobble. However, it's far from what I would call solid. Finally, let's start with some CPU benchmarks. G5 managed to score 2,772 points in Cinebench R20. Cycle's BMW Blender CPU render took 5 minutes and 29 seconds. My main machine with Ryzen 9 3900X did it in 2 minutes and 1 second. Needless to say, the 6 core CPU on the G5 is no slouch for productivity. I'd love to hear from you guys what time it took your machine to complete this render. Be sure to let me know in the comment section. 
Before we jump into Heaven Benchmark, let's quickly look at how to switch between the power-saving Vega 6 or the high-performance RX 5600M for individual games or apps. Just hit the Style menu and type in Graphics Settings. From there, browse and choose and apply the setting. In Heaven Benchmark, G5 managed to score 2,154 points using the 5600M. The Vega 6 scored 369 points, which is more than a HD 4870 managed just a few weeks ago. The laptop is supplied with 240 watt power brick, and during benchmarks, the total power draw peaked at 178 watts and 78 watts respectively. It's time to play some games, and we start with Need for Speed Most Wanted. Here, the G5 delivered solid 60 frames per second. Since this game is capped at 60 frames per second, we are not taking advantage of the 144Hz screen. In Need for Speed Heat, the G5 managed very respectable 51 FPS on average, making this game very playable. Up next is GTA 5, and here we saw 85 FPS on average. By dropping just few graphical settings, we could easily get over 100 frames per second, making use of that 144Hz screen. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the G5 fared really well, delivering almost 60 frames per second on average. However, the game advised me that we are not meeting the minimum spec for the amount of memory, and there was this occasional stutter, which I believe has to do with the 8 gigs that this laptop comes with. Turns out, 8 gigs of RAM is just simply not enough for this title. Witcher 3 was next, and here we saw average of 88 frames per second. Again, I would almost recommend dropping few of the graphical settings down to achieve 100 plus FPS and truly enjoy the smoothness of the G5 screen. Cyberpunk 2077 was next, and here, the G5 did not impress. I only saw 27 frames per second on average. What's worse, dropping settings down to medium only meant one or two extra frames, so I don't think this game is all that well with AMD hardware. Fallout 4, another game that's capped at 60 frames per second, However, G5 did not hesitate for a split second, offering smooth gameplay and lovely visuals. A great result. CSGO was next. We saw 75 FPS on average with the high preset. And again, to better enjoy the game, I'd probably turn the settings down and enjoy the fast-paced action at higher refresh rate. You did not think I would miss GTA 4 from testing, did you? <laughs> Firstly, I've tried it with the integrated Vega 6, amazing results of 37 FPS on average. Switching over to 5600M, we saw nearly 74 FPS on average, which is exactly double of what the Vega 6 delivered. And the last game that we've tested today was Kingdom Deliverance, where on medium details, the G5 pushed over 78 FPS on average. Do we all agree on how much we hated the combat system in this game before we mastered it? Uh. 
Before we wrap up, here's my cheap kitchen thermal meter measuring G5 surface temperatures after a few hours of playing games. The keyboard gets really warm and does not feel very comfortable to use. However, palm rest is considerably cooler and I did not feel any discomfort. Let's wrap up this review and start with the positives. G5 delivered great performance both in games and productivity. The all AMD component combo works. Laptop is happy to push more power to either the CPU or the GPU, depending on the workload, thanks to SmartShift technology. G5 is really easy to upgrade. I also like the 144Hz screen. It's bright enough and has matte coating, so reflections are not distracting you from games. And once you go past 60 Hz, it's really hard to come back. Believe me. With the 51 watt hour battery, the G5 managed 4 hours of playing YouTube videos or just over 90 minutes of GTA 4 on the integrated Vega 6. And then there's the price. At £589 or €685, US dollars, G5 had no competition. There simply was no other option on the market that could offer this much performance at this price. Now the bad. My configuration came with just 8GB of memory and 256GB of storage, which is, simply put, not enough for 2021. As we saw with some games that were impacted during the testing, it's often right on the limit and the SSD just won't fit more than a couple of games, which is not ideal. Then it's the amount of heat that the G5 produces. The dual fans are not extremely loud, however the CPU temps would spike up to 93 degrees, which is too hot in my opinion. There are many Reddit posts suggesting that repasting does help, greatly, and I've considered doing it. After all, it's just what I love doing. However, since Dell would likely void the warranty, I did not proceed. The speakers are just okay and the 720p webcam just about does it. In summary then, is G5 the right laptop for you? I'd say yes, it is. For less than £60, it can be easily upgraded with 16GB memory kit. Further £60 will bump the storage up to 1TB. Now thanks to two NVMe slots, you can even keep the existing 256 in there without needing to reinstall Windows 10. Oh and yes, the G5 is Windows 11 ready. Looking at the second-hand market, few G5s can be had for about £600 mark, suggesting that the silicon shortage keeps on pushing the hardware prices up. If you can manage to buy one for around £450 to £500 mark, I would not hesitate to pull the trigger. But that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to let me know in the comments below and I hope to see you in the next one.